it's Friday, July 19th, and I'm your host, Sarah Beal. On today's show, we learn more about shellfishing classes for all. Unity Day 2019 is just around the corner, and we catch up with Arts and Culture Quarter, Melissa Chartran. But first, let's start with some news you can use. Barnesville Water Resources, Water Quality Distilled. The town has made it easier than ever to stay up to date and informed on water quality here in the town of Barnesville, right on the homepage, www.townofbarnesville.us. You can find this logo, which will take you to our new water quality page. You can find information on beach and pond water quality and a link to Channel 18's YouTube page with a playlist of all our interviews and segments produced on water quality. Log on and get informed. Speaking of water, the Town of Barnstable through Channel 18 and the Department of Public Works is teaming up with the Association to Preserve Cape Cod to create a series of videos. The first in that series is Stormwater 101. Do you know what stormwater is and how it affects our drinking water here on Cape Cod? When raindrops fall from the sky, trees and plants help break their fall. In the woods, rain is gently guided to the ground below where plant roots and microorganisms drink it in. Here, impurities in the rain are filtered out. Rainwater, not absorbed by the plants, continues to seep into the ground, restoring groundwater and filling lakes, ponds, and streams. The Cape's groundwater, the same water we drink, depends on rain and snowmelt for its replenishment. Roofs, driveways, roadways, and parking lots are not so welcoming. The rain washes these hardened surfaces of dirt particles from air pollution, fertilizers, oil and gas from cars, litter, and pet waste. And with no place to soak in, the rainwater gathers in puddles or speeds down the road, taking the pollution with it. Flowing from our streets into our coastal waterways, this is where rainwater becomes stormwater. But water is a resource we can't afford to waste. Understanding this, we can use new ways to handle stormwater and where we can, let the raindrops soak in where they fall. Have you ever wanted to learn how to shellfish but weren't sure where to start? The Marine Environmental Affairs Division has the class for you. Intern Olivia Morrow went out and met up with shellfish technician Liz Lewis to learn all about this program. So we have Learn to Shellfish class, which was, um, you know, it was geared towards more adults because we have uh, the clam and class for kids, and we found out that a lot of the parents wanted to know how to shellfish just as much as the kids. So I was like, okay, I have to make it a little more comfortable for them. So we have the just generic learn to shellfish today. Um, and we have two classes this year. I thought on a Wednesday it might be a little quieter, but it looks like um, everyone wants to learn how to shellfish. Um, so everyone's come out. We've stocked the landing here at Bridge Street. Um, so we make it nice and easy for them so people can practice their cohogging technique. I think shellfishing can be a little intimidating. I know, um, you know, there's. it seems like there's lots of rules. We have this thick regulation book that we give people when they get their permit. Um, this gives you an opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with one of our volunteers that has been doing this forever, um, and they'll teach you exactly what you need to know so that you can go out and do it yourself. You can go get your own food, get back to the earth, have something to put on the table that you worked hard for. Um, and so this is this is the, the basics. But also, if you've done it before, this is a class to, to hone your skills. Say, hey, volunteer, where do you usually go shell fishing, you know? Um, and you can, you can meet some good people out here, too. Well, we're new to Cape Cod. We're here less than a year. And shell fishing has always been a passion of mine. And I thought, well, why not give back to the community by, by being a volunteer and teaching other people how to shellfish and still get the enjoyment out of it because we get to go home too. Even with clams and not just rocks. <laughs> uh, they have taught me how to get the clams and then the little gauge, how to measure them and then like it, to keep them and how to cook them. We have a team come down a few days in the summer to plant the clams, to seed them and thin them and maintain the beds. 
and so that's how I heard about these uh, learn to clam days. So on my own, I started coming to this and helping people learn how to harvest the clams that I've probably helped plant a few years back. It brings a lot of people together. You know, all the license sales goes right back into our program, right back into our staff and um, growing the shellfish. So this year we we ordered three million one millimeter cohogs and two to three years later, they'll be here so you guys can harvest them. You have to be very careful with the rake and if you pick them up, you have to size them first because they could be too small. And you have to throw them back in because the babies and they need to make sure. It's great, it's a nice day to be in the water. It's a lot more comfortable than on land. You can see how excited and happy people are that there's something new and different that people wouldn't normally do. One cohog can drink about 30 gallons of water a day. So it's they're constantly filtering this water. Um, they're helping to take some of the excess nutrients that they need to grow. Um, and they're taking it out of the water to make it cleaner for us. Um, so having said that, I mean, you do have to be careful where your shellfish comes from, um, which is why we work so hard with our maps and letting you know the good spots to go. Um, but they're, they're just great. And they're really, they're important to the habitat. We're not the only ones that eat them too. Um, so it's, it's great just helping the environment. Um, shellfish is always good. I feel like it makes people more educated about like wildlife and like the right way to. Yeah. Yeah, and it teaches you, like, it's more fun. It, if you want to know how to do this, it's more fun to do this than just go out and buy clams. So. Yeah. Um, and it's not just about the shellfishing, it's about the natural resources in general. And, you know, we live in a, in a very fragile environment, and I think this helps people understand just how fragile it is. Generally, these are the ones that came from a hatchery at some, at some point, and so when you harvest them, you can see what you're getting, and you get some of each here. There's ones that just reproduce from the wild stock and some that get seeded. I love Hin and the kids, their little Clamor Kid badges and a book, and they're so excited. We have some kids that return year after year to these. They come to each one of our classes, um, and they just get so excited. You know, usually as adults, we're looking for the, the smallest ones that are legal. They are looking for the biggest co-og that they can find to bring home, and it's a big prize for them. Um, and new people getting into it. I just love it. We're going to steam them and stuff them. You get to eat clams, which I've never had clams, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and it's just a little fun thing. If you're on vacation, you can do that. So You can yeah. freeze your cohogs, you can make stuffies, you can do whatever you want with them and have them all year. We'll have one more class coming up. So the first Saturday in August, we have another class. For anyone that's seeing this, come on down. You don't need to sign up. We have tons of volunteers. I want to thank my volunteers because they make this happen. Um, and come on down. Get out there to the ocean. Do as Liz says and come on down. The next class for all ages will be held on Saturday, August 3rd at 8 a.m. at Bridge Street Landing in Oxerville. For more information, you can contact the MEA offices at 508-790-6272. Looking for something fun and different to do in Barnstable? ArtsBarnstable.com is where you want to go to find out about all the wonderful art events and programs going on in town. I caught up with Arts and Culture Coordinator Melissa Chartrand to find out more about what is going on. Down here with Melissa Chartrand, we're down at the Hyannis Harbor, the Art of Shanties. We're about halfway through the summer, I'd say, by now, and it's been pretty great so far. Knock on wood. <laughs> Hasn't been any crazy weather, and the, the warm weather has been here, and it's been really nice. So how has it been going? It's been going great, Sarah. Thank you for bringing up one of my favorite locations, Hyannis Harbor, right here in downtown Hyannis, home of seven of our artist shanties. We have another five along the walkway to the sea up at the Harbor Overlook. And what I always like to say is it's always sunny at the shanties. So sure. I can tell you the weather's been spectacular. And let's extend that now to the town of Barnstable. Yes. It's always sunny in the town of Barnstable. It is always sunny in the town of Barnstable. The shanties, okay. So the shanties down here have been here for what, 14, 15 years? This is the 15th season I for Bismore it. Park. Oh it's in a blink, it's gone. It's the second season for the Harbor Overlook and it features local Cape Cod artisan artisans. They, uh, there's a whole application process, but they apply and get juried in and participate in this wonderful program where on a weekly basis, they rotate in and out through the season. They, they set up shop, they work here on site, they sell. It's of course free to browse for visitors, but it's all about connections. It's connecting visitors to our local community. And I think for residents as well, Sarah, uh, we have so many locals that come down. Why wouldn't you want to come and spend a few hours walking around and 
even you know meeting some of the fishermen and watching the boats and strolling through and strolling down Main Street um, just again to have those experiences I think everyone is looking for those wonderful memories mm -hmm. here and this is one such way in which you can connect with your community and have an amazing memory yeah and it's in a great way to impact the local economy because like you said all of the artists are here from Cape Cod and it's wide-ranging it's not just photography it's not just paintings there's jewelry there's rope work there's I mean pottery sure. fiber arts uh, so on occasion we have literary arts and even in with all those categories you can drill down to the types of jewelry and types of painting um, and and that's one of the things we do with Arts Barnstable I'll give a plug for artsbarnstable.com not only can our visitors find plenty of things to do town wide but for the creative economy side of things there were so many opportunities the artist shanty program is one we have an artwork on loan program we have opportunities for them to rent space throughout the town. Uh, we have artist excursions and so on. So it helps them, it's a win-win, helps them uh, work and sell and create and for our visitors it creates a wonderful backdrop. Awesome, so artsbarnstable.com is really the place that you want to go where you can find everything that you need to know about where to go, what to do here in the town of Barnstable related to arts. You can find things like this amazing map. This map shows <laughs> all seven villages in the town of Barnstable and what kind of art and culture and things like that that you can do and all of this stuff. Links to social media, calendars, events, all on artsforestable.com. It's really the place that you want to go if you're looking for something to do and you can't say there's nothing going on. Exactly, and I want to emphasize that it's really year-round. Of course, mm -hmm. here in the summer months, everything increases, um, but year-round, you can't be bored if, you're, if you'd like to find something to do. And not necessarily, you know, not um, uh, perhaps going to an art opening is someone's thing, but there's certainly performing arts mm -hmm. and um, taking a nature walk on a trail to be inspired, heading to one of the beaches, going to the Hyannis Youth and Community Center, our adult community center, I'm taking a class. Anything and everything is available. And as you mentioned, the artsbarnstable.com links you to all of that. Um, and to the fact that we have not one, but two cultural districts here in the town of Barnstable. In the entire state of Massachusetts, we're only one of two communities that have that honor. We have the Hyannis High Arts Cultural District and the Barnstable Village Cultural District. So if I can just take a minute to talk about those again in all seven villages, we're not sliding anyone in the town of Barnstable um, from the libraries and talks and um, programs at a lot of the wonderful museums and historical societies. But here in Hyannis, on any given day, you can find free concerts. You can go to a free Shakespeare performance. Um, you can, of course, meet the artists here. You can take part in Tai Chi. Quench Fitness is running, and there's a little boot camp. So you can get in shape to eat all that ice cream as you stroll the main streets uh, to get some delicious seafood perhaps, and so on. So, um, and what else do we have? We have the town band every Wednesday, and that's hometown charm at its best. Yes. Um, and really, I mean, it's such a delight. Let's talk a little bit about the music, because there's some, uh, you have Harbor Overlook artists that perform um, at the Five Shanties up at the Harbor Overlook, which is right next to Town Hall, very easy to find. You have uh, musicians performing there, is it Mondays and Fridays? We do, we have a live lunch music program, so 11.30 to 1.30, and that was geared not only towards the visitors, but the, the locals working hard during the day that uh, have to wait till the end of the day to have some fun. And so during lunchtime, we have a variety of singer-songwriters that come from 11.30 to 1.30, Mondays and Fridays, we now have Thursday evenings from 6 to 7.30, also with musicians. Um, again, we love to support the creative economy, and um, again, our musical component is one such way as well. It's so great. I've gone out be before on my lunch break and sat out at the Harbor Overlook, listened to the music, had my lunch. There's a couple of picnic tables over there. You can just kind of sit and relax. You can see the harbor from the Harbor Overlook. It's really just... It's the perfect place to be. Absolutely, and even downtown Hyannis, we work closely with uh, one of our cultural district partners, the Main Street Business Improvement District. They work tirelessly to also support the creative economy and create that wonderful experience. So as you're strolling down from Main Street to the harbor and back again, several days a week, they have music along the street and other activities as well. Just to, just to give you that nice feeling as you uh, do your meet and greets with all the various merchants and, and people watching. Right. As it were. <laughs> this is a great place to come in the summertime down here on Bismarck Park in Hyannis Harbor. 
um, bring your family, bring your friends. There's so much to do, artsbarnstable.com. Melissa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Sarah. The fourth annual Unity Day is coming up in August. We take a look back at last year's celebrations as we get ready to come together as a community in 2019. I think this is wonderful. This is the third Unity Day, and what makes it so special is that the young men who came together to do, to organize the Unity Day, and how he initiated it. It came be about because of all the turmoil that was going around the country with uh, police officers and, and men of color that were clashing, and these young men got together with the law enforcement here in Barnstable and decided that they wanted to bring the groups together and show some unity. And that's what this day is about. Um, and it just brought the whole community together to say, you know, we appreciate our law enforcement people and we should be working with them. And law enforcement needs to know us and, and, and know them and, and change that image of young uh, males of color, that they are productive and, and they are here in the community and they do care. Um, it's a very caring community. It's a beautiful community and a beautiful day that the Lord has given us out here today. So. Um, I'm proud of, of the group of young men that are putting this together, and I'm very proud of my community, and that I'm, today I'm, I'm able to be a part of it. Stay, Jesse. Uh, you know, this is turning into one of my favorite days of the year. Uh, just having everybody from the community come out and uh, be a part of something positive, it, it's awesome. Well, I hope that uh, more people just want to get involved uh, with their community, uh, whether it's volunteering, coaching, you know, coaching a, a team, or just all around being a, a positive person. And, and really showing pride in where you're from. And you know, when we do things like that, I mean, great things can happen. Oh, community is everything. I, I can't run my school without community. Um, our students that we have come from all over Hyannis, and I've seen many of them today with their families. They run up to me like uh, I just saw them yesterday, and, and it's, it's amazing. I have people I went to high school with. I, I graduated from Barnesville High School, so I have people I graduated with, people I know from the community, people I know from Hyannis West. It's just a wonderful way to get everyone together. They can have uh, law enforcement be a safe place and, and safe people to go to, and that's what we need to promote is that um, they're here to help and support. And we try to have law enforcement come into our building as much as we can so they can see the positive side of that. Because they hear things, they hear things out in the community, but we want to tell them the positive side of it. And that they're here to help and that they should be able to go to them and feel Great support. job out here. It gets bigger every year. The Barbosas and the Men of Action have done a fantastic job down here. They really have. It's getting the community involved in everything we do and getting us involved in things they do. Because in the end, you know, we tell people all the time, we don't know if there's a problem out there unless you talk to us, but sometimes talking to us doesn't, isn't like the easiest thing for some people to do. So breaking down a little bit of those barriers and having people be a little more approachable and to say, that, yeah, I really can talk to these people and, you know, get my point across or, you know, you know, so when they get in that position where they have to call us, they're not so hesitant to call. You know, we're there. You know? um, the sense of that we're, the similarities that we all have while respecting each other's differences, I think really contribute to the vibrancy that exists in, in Barnstable. And we see that every day at the Senior Center. Just being down here on the Village Green is an amazing experience. Despite the heat, um, you know, just getting to interact with people of all ages, you know, and see the connections and just a sense of camaraderie and excitement and energy is something that we try and, you know, replicate all the time at the Senior Center. Right, Judith? That's right. And I think this really shows that the senior center isn't just in 
isolated entity. We're very much a part of the community and very intergenerational. Exactly what you said. It's community. We're all together. We're having fun. Um, people are finding commonalities in um, in everyday life. You know, this reminds me of the Cape Cod that I grew up on. Um, you know, that where we have um, everybody coming together. People aren't afraid of one another and they are finding a way to break bread, have a meal together, play games together, sometimes dunking a police officer together, and it's just a, a wonderful opportunity. It does um, take a lot of planning. Um, fortunately, there are a lot of arms that take different parts of it. Um, the Barnesville Police Department, the People of Action, you know, they there were certain elements that they wanted to make sure were included. Um, being the town, we wanted to make sure that special um, parts of our town were um, highlighted. So we're thrilled that we have the Gateway Greeters here with Park Happy. We have um, the taxidermy trailer from Marine Environmental Affairs, Senior Services, they're painting kindness rocks. We have folks from all over with recreation um, helping playing games. And it's just, a really fun, old-fashioned kind of time, but I think that people are understanding that our police officers, um, it, it's been a very different world of late, and um, to see everybody just having a great time, I think is just, it's really special, it's the community. Day will take place on Friday, August 2nd on the Highness Village Green from 4 to 7 p.m. All are invited to attend. Comments, suggestions, accolades? Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube or send us an email. Channel 18 works for you. For Barnesville Today, I'm Sarah Beal.